So it's, it's hard to, to, to stay within the boundaries of something that was defined or written in, in stone, you know, how many hundred years ago. Let's so, talk about a high school experience. I went to Immaculate with my sister Camila. Mm -hmm. We were the only Rasta, Rasta youths at that time right. going to Immaculate. Um, and so it was just a very interesting contrast for me. This week we're discussing the image of Rastafari women, how they have evolved over the years. And we have on set to help us with this discussion, Kalissa McDonald. She's a rebel on stage. I like to call her the, the little fire mama on stage. So now she's in a different capacity to talk to us some more about this issue. Nice to have you. Good to be here, Sadika. Give time. So let's talk about your upbringing in a Rastafari household. What yes. what were some of those values that you would have learned from early growing up as it relates to image? As it relates to image, well, um, you know, as you said, we grew up in a Rastafari household. Mm -hmm. My father, Chakula, my mother, Goldilocks. They're also musicians, um, and I just remember growing up um, that it was image was was of a level of importance. Mm -hmm. um, especially in a societal sense, you know, at home, at home, you relax, no problem, right. you know, but when we're going out anywhere, um, especially with them, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, to maintain a level of, um, a level of composure, a level of moderacy mm -hmm. um, in our dress, which I never mind because I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of person. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reserved in a way. And that's typical in, in every Rastafari household, you would assume. In terms I mean, of I would things. assume so, but to be honest, you know, Rastafari is such a broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are so many different liberties within Rastafari um, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that my, that my family is a typical Rastafari mm -hmm. family neither. Let's so, talk about a high school experience. Okay, yes. Um, high school, I went to Immaculate for high school. Big up all. <laughs> <laughs> Big up everybody from Immaculate, you know. Um, I went to Immaculate with my sister Camila. Mm -hmm. We were the only Rasta, Rasta youths at that time right. going to Immaculate. Um, and so it was just a very interesting contrast for me, um, you know, to go from a Rastafari household, you know, cultural, vegetarian, liberty, um, mm -hmm. in the way that we dress, in the way that we talk, in the way that we act, um, and then to be, to have the contrast and be at school where it's an all girls, um, an all girls setting, you know, everybody, involved in the makeup and the dressing and you know mm. who hotter than who and <laughs> so it was an interesting contrast i definitely think it was important mm -hmm. for my growth mm -hmm. you know um and i definitely went through a stage where i felt like maybe i rebelled a little bit against um the the, the values that my, my parents instilled in me but one thing i always respected about them is that um you know they never tried to force us right um you know, into doing, doing something that we weren't comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, instilled in us the importance of maintaining culture and, you know, roots. Some of those values were no pants. Yeah, no <laughs> pants. Daddy never used to want us to wear no pants. Um, and I think I got that a little less than my older sisters. Yeah. You know, I remember them having to, um, you know, sometime when I'm going, oh, maybe I'm telling their secret, but sometime... <laughs> Um, you know, they're going out, they leave the house in a skirt. <laughs> and, you know, they have to change to go out. Just to be, you know, like, nobody don't want to go to a party at that time mm -hmm. in, a, in a long skirt. Yeah. You know, and it's just, we as youths experiencing. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think that we were um, rebelling necessarily against Rastafari and the Rastafari liberty because it was something that we loved. Mm -hmm. We treasured our, our upbringing at home mm -hmm. and, and the values of our parents. But, you know, t t t it was hard to be, and it wasn't like I went to a Rastafari school where everyone around us was, you know, dressing that way, speaking that way, looking that way. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was just our way of feeling out. Fitting in and trying to balance. Uh, yeah. yeah, balance. That's a good, that's a good word, balance. Um, mm -hmm. Let's yeah. talk about your evolution now. You have, I would say, grown to become a little bit more relaxed in terms of your presentation on, yes. on stage. When I look at your pictures, I, I see more little skin. I'm, I'm a moderate dresser. Um, you know, everybody always telling me, why you don't, you look so good and you this and that. And I just like to be comfortable. That's mm -hmm. my, main, my main objective when I'm dressing up to this day. Comfort. Is to be comfortable, yeah, yeah, be comfortable. yeah. Sometimes I want to trot the streets in some pants and mm -hmm. just, you know, whole a whole, whole, whole militancy, you know. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I wouldn't say I'm a tomboy, but I, I'm an active, I'm mm -hmm. an active woman. I love playing football, you know, I dance, I will climb a tree, I will, you know, scale the fence or the gate if I have to, mm -hmm. and to do those <laughs> things in a skirt, you know, sometimes it does, the, the, the wardrobe doesn't really, 
um, match up with that lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, when I'm running, I can't be running in a in in um in in pant in, in a skirt. skirt. Yeah. And it, it reminded me of when um, I was going to school one one time in Tanzania in East Africa, um, and it's a very Islam um, centered society. Mm -hmm. And I remembered some of the Muslim girls had to play sports in skirts and had to play in long sleeve and it was hot. So, you know, sometimes it does, you know, I'm no one to question anybody's religion. What the culture. Um, but I think where, as it relates to Rastafari, um, that's where I was very um, appreciative of my parents, mm -hmm. of overstanding, you know, that we want to be able to exist within this time mm -hmm. without feeling constricted by what we're wearing or what, um, you know, or how we look. And they're receptive to that. Yeah. Do you think do you think the Rastafari community um, looks at these images now? Like oh or sisters are wearing pants, they are looking more modern and fashionable. Do they care? Is I think, it an I issue? I think some people care. I mean I've been I've been called out for it before, you know, by by um, a Rastafari elder for wearing pants. Um, and it made me uncomfortable, you know, at one point it made me question um, you know, like, should, am I really doing something wrong? Am I really, you know, shunning mm -hmm. the Rastafari community? And, and for a long time, it almost made me very reclusive. Like, it mm -hmm. made me a little uncomfortable because I felt like the way that I dressed was an offense mm -hmm. um, to Rastafari. Um, but I've come to just accept, you know, the way mm -hmm. that I like to do things. Mm -hmm. And I've also come to accept the diversity within Rastafari. Um, and I think that every culture, every religion has evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's hard to, to, to stay within the boundaries of something that was defined or written in, in stone, you know, how many hundred years ago, mm -hmm. because the times has changed. The world is getting hotter. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We're not going to be wearing long sleeve and long rrr rrr rr because it's hot. Things have changed. Like, I just, sometimes we just have to wear some shorts because it's yeah. hot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you have Camila dress you one day. <laughs> Camila, whenever she gets the chance to dress me, my gosh, it's she I look like. But Camila is Miss you know, fa fashionista, and, and I appreciate her for that too, of being able to be like, no, 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 I'm going to dress the way that I want to dress, mm -hmm. you know, in the colors, in the clothes that I want to dress, um, and she still maintains a level of royalty. Of course. You know, which is, you know, it's great for me, but, you know, personally, as an individual, comfort first. So <laughs> she, she has even entered a beauty pageant. Isn't that something that a Rastafari um, community that was, would I not think that like? was interesting for her family, you know, because we're, we're always very supportive of each other and what we do. Um, you know, and there we were at Miss Jamaica, all of us screaming <laughs> on signs and for our beautiful Rasta sister, mm -hmm. you know, what we're going to do. We have to, you know, and as I said before, I really appreciate love my parents for that, of being um, of embracing us as individuals, mm -hmm. you know, within a society that we're not necessarily grown up in a close-knit Rastafarian community. You know, some people have this experience where, it, it, you know, it feels a little more, um, it feels a little more balanced, balanced right. to, to, you know, to, to dress and to, to have that image. So we will continue to watch your evolution. Maybe a couple years yes. from now, no, no, you're no. giving Camilla no, a stiff Tanika. competition. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will stay true to my long skirt <laughs> and my cultural dress, you know, but it's a balance. It's a balance. <laughs>